Well, we're talking about something today. Something, definitely something. Two snaps means something. we have to start talking. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> what are we talking about? Well, first, let's let's introduce Bumble because he's joining us today. Um, Mr. Bumble. He's my buddy. Mr. Bumble? Maybe. Yeah, well, I guess he could be Mr. because he's done eating people and children and stuff like that. He's a good He's a good Bumble. Mm-hmm. He's got all his teeth back. He got yeah. dentures. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're supposed to talk. Today, we're supposed to talk about how our headphones tune for bass by adjusting the fit. Hmm. And we cover this somewhat in the fitment videos, like especially the 1266, because with a 1266, you could spread it out, make a big gap, which we kind of yeah. prefer using it that way. Rotate the pads. It's whatnot. made to float on your head. Yeah. And you could do that with Diana to some extent. We also get people that email and say, well, there's something wrong with my headphone. All right. I'm here. I'm playing this loud bass track and one channel's distorting or something's distorting, you know. And uh, it's like, no, there's probably nothing wrong with your headphone. It's just you got too much of a gap. And when you get down in the deep bass range, uh, this is what we want to explain what happens. So we're going to talk about damping of the drivers, how the drivers are damped. Well, we probably should start with the fact that this doesn't only apply to our headphones. It applies to all headphones. It just so happens that our headphones, it matters a bit more since they're so adjustable and they're designed to more or less be loose and not have a tight seal on your head. So the challenge is if you have an irregular seal from one side to the other, if one side's way out, the other side's way in, you're going to get a totally different response. Um, and so we do see that from time to time. Somebody says they have a problem in the base and inevitably one pad's rotated weird mm. or one side is bent weird or the way it's sitting on their head, it's like crooked or something. And so they get a totally different seal on one side to the other. Yeah. And that causes a big difference. Well, another thing I've seen is that the, like the, the magnet ring isn't actually fully seated. Yeah. You get a little gap there. Yeah. So it looks like they're both right. on, but you yeah. know, it's gap. not quite there. Yeah. Usually it finds itself. Usually. You wear you put it on yeah. or off and it snaps. Yeah. You know, it usually won't sit there for long. But, but I it, have seen if you it. just change the pad position, yeah. you're right. It happens happen. at shows. So you, you increase the gap yeah, on one side. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for show. Yeah, especially. Yeah, it shows the pads are always yeah, yeah. they're never yeah, lined so people up. People put them on different. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and then people like like, every this 10 minutes you're like, right. what happened yeah, here? Yeah. Everyone wants so, to yeah. take the pad off and look, you know, and then they don't put it back right, which is normal. So I imagine it's pretty easy to do if you're not paying attention at home. Too, oh yeah. You know. Yeah, usually for newer owners, this yeah. is the case. Once you get a little experience, it's pretty easy to figure out. You got to probably run into this a time or two and figure out what caused it. And then in the future, it's, it's pretty easy to tell why you have a discrepancy. But what we're supposed to explain is why this changes the base, because I think people don't have an understanding of that, hmm. and that's why we keep people keep thinking they have a problem. And of course, they still won't have an understanding if they don't watch this video. But you know, but bottom line is we need to explain how the driver is damped. And you you suggested it, uh, it affects all headphones, but and most headphones clamp, so you don't you don't have this. But dynamic headphones really don't have as much of an issue with damping, because you know the driver is it's like a woofer yeah. on, on a speaker. It's kind of made to work in free air. It depends on the headphone, though. It depends mm. on the headphone, absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure some of them have a very loose um, basket assembly. They're made to move uh, Some headphones, lot, and so you could get heavy distortion when they're off your head. Oh, sure. Because you know? we hear that as well. Yep. We have people that are playing the headphones, usually to break them in. They have them laying on a table or something like that, and they have them playing loud, yeah. and they're hearing what they perceive as distortion when the headphone's sitting out. The challenge is there's no load on it. It's not designed yeah. to be used in that case. So that's not really indicative not a, of how the thing's yeah. gonna perform when it's on your head. Yeah, it's kind of meaningless. What we tell people is they're not desktop speakers. They're yeah. not made to perform like that. Well, no, oddly enough, yeah, on my old Bose noise canceling headphones, they do they will distort heavily. Yeah. If you don't have them on your head. They're just trying to push yeah, more yeah. air. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some headphones like, do oh, that. Oh man, that sounds bad. But yeah. it makes sense because the driver's yeah. pushing air. They're moving in and out, they're moving air, right? I think when they're on your head. There's a head in the way. It's yeah. restricting it, right? Yeah. If you have them off, they are, it's easier for them to well, move. Well, it's easy for us to explain it, but I don't think people understand it because a lot of headphones will play fine. Dynamics will play fine yeah, on a the lot desk, will. Yeah. you know, and so people use it like that. And then they take a planer like this and put it down, and it doesn't do it. They crank it to try to get more right. volume yeah. in the room, right. right? And it's like, it sounds bad. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and that's what we need to explain is what's going on. We need to explain that, that how the head is offering resistance to the motion of the driver. And I think we're going to have a graphic put up or something like that. Oh. He's going to, yeah, I think our fancy. Yeah, Mr. Art guy over there, oh. Mr. Graphics DMS is going to do something <laughs> fancy for us. Oh yeah. But he's going to show basically where the diaphragm's in here and that's the speaker basically and it's moving like this, right? And think about it, it's a very lightweight thin 
membrane. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now it's trying to move air, moving, moving to play music mm -hmm. in your friggin' ear, right? So, uh, so as you get this, the whole cup assembly and everything closer to your head, this this diaphragm moving air is pushing the air. So as it gets closer to a surface like the palm of your hand, you know, like if you took the twelve sixty six and you went and you went like this with it, right? You covered it. Obviously, if you cover this and you got something trying to move air, it's having a harder time moving because mm -hmm. you're plugging the hole, right? You open the hole, and now the diaphragm's got free, no no air resistance. It moves as much as it wants, mm -hmm. and that's basically what's occurring when you start to move your head away from this, right? When you're wearing it and you make a gap like this, and you have a gap around, or even in the back, the bigger the gap, the easier it is for this speaker to move. And so what happens is at high volume levels, higher volume levels, a really deep bass, where it's really trying to move a lot of air, and it's away from your head, it's, it's, it's too easy to move. And it starts going into a, a nonlinear area where it, it's distorted all the hell. Well, or it hits the magnet. <laughs> yeah, right. At, at, at worst case, if you yeah. have enough power, right, the, the diaphragm will slap against the magnet and really mm -hmm. get distorted. It won't damage our headphone. A dynamic driver you might damage. I don't know. I, I think depends. most of them are limited on yeah, travel. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know for sure. We don't make You those. theoretically could, but most are designed to tolerate that. I would think depends so. Depends on the design, like everything, though, right. right? I know on the pointers, they're just it's not going to hurt anything for the diaphragm to hit, hit the magnet structure. Yeah, it's totally fine for ours. Yeah. yeah. But I guess essentially what you're doing is creating a differently tuned port with your head and gap. Yeah, it's like a port. Yeah. A big one all around well, here. depending on how big the gap is. Yeah. And we like listening that way. I think a lot of people that own it, it was the 1266 was designed to spread out, float on your head. Well, it depends what you're listening to, too. <laughs> As with everything, because sometimes you want a little more, a little let, more punch. That's you know. the other thing we should talk about is adjusting it. When so now when this, when you're wearing it and you hit a track where there's so much bass energy that distortion does occur, there's two fixes that I could think of. One is move, close the headphones in, get them closer to reduce the gap. So that'll that'll make it harder for the drivers to move, and it'll, they'll go back into their linear operating range, and they won't distort. Two is lower the volume. Wow. Right? Until that part of the track goes away, and then, or three is just listen through it. Whatever, it's not hurting anything. It just yeah. sounds bad, you know. So um, that's really the solutions, you know. Yeah, and we probably should note this only really happens typically when there's extreme low frequency at high volume, or if the headphones are very very loose on the head. Because some people do wear them floating like an inch off their ear, and then it's nearly like open. Right. And so in those cases, that's a little bit outside of how they're designed to operate. They'll yeah. be fine there, but they're not really made to be super, super loose inches away from I mean, you could head. do it. You just you could do couldn't it. play it. It just limits your volume yeah. you can get away with. Yeah, you can't have them super loud when they're floating off your head. Yeah, and unless you're listening to a genre of music that has sub like, subsonics in it all the time, like yeah. organ music, you're not going to run into this with every track. Well, yeah. It's just going to be an issue with certain stuff that's just got like, you know, a 20 hertz wave coming at you or, you know, some massive right. amount of uh, bass energy. It is what it is. That's part of the music. And, you know, for, for those particular tracks, yeah, you just need to clamp it down or get it closer if you're if it bothers you, you know, or turn the volume down. Or change the position in the ear pads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever I'll, it takes. Yeah, right. That's true. The other option is to rotate the pad so it changes where the gap is or tightens up the gap. Or what, you can remove the what, gap. What I do, what I do instead of... Uh, for just temporary while you're wearing them, right? You have it out like this. What I do is instead of rotating the pads, which is more work than it's worth because mm. then you got to put them back, mm. I rotate the whole headphone. Mm. I mean, yeah. what the hell's the difference? So now you're rotating the whole headphone forward, and now this part, the thicker part's moving up. Like I said, it's, it's the quickest back. way to do it. Yeah, yeah. it's way easier. So you're running a track like that. That's what I usually do. You just Or just flop it around your head until it goes away. Usually you can adjust it, you know? And that's the other thing. Some people will say, by the way, I just thought of another one. As well. So, well, so how come it's only doing it on one channel type thing? Oh, yeah. And it's like, well, you can't really tell if the gap's even on both sides if you have a loose, yeah. if it's fitting loose. Yeah. One side is a little more gap than the other, then that channel's going to go go off, go get distorted a little bit quicker. The recordings don't always have bass even on both channels. Well, yeah. There's all kinds of reasons, you know. So bottom line is it's not, it's not that there's something wrong with one channel. It's just you need to snug the fit to solve the problem. Oh my God, one channel's distorting. There's something wrong with the headphone. And yeah. The answer usually is to relax. There's nothing wrong with the TC. It's 
sure there's nothing wrong with it unless you put a screwdriver for it through it it's going to be okay mm. <laughs> it's just what you're playing and how you're wearing it so just play with fit and we don't keep in mind too we do have a fitment video there's two there's two videos on the 1266 back a bit mm -hmm. one for unboxing and setup which was when you first get it it's not a bad idea but yeah we'll put links to those videos in the in this video description so you could click to them if you want to if you haven't seen them yet, because it's a good idea. The advanced one's kind of cool because it shows you what what you're capable of doing with the 1266. And I think we have one on Diana, too. Uh, we have an unboxing and setup video on Diana, which shows how to connect the cables and stuff we'll mm -hmm. put in there, too. And uh, and again, she is semi-adjustable for a fit. You can, you, Diana doesn't necessarily have, doesn't, that's the other thing I wanted to mention in this. I get, I get people that, that are wearing Diana and they, they're trying to make it clamp. Yeah. Like it doesn't fit me right. They're tightening the shit out of it. In other words, all the way up, full close, so it clamps and it still isn't doing it. And then they're complaining that it's hard, it's heavy on the temples, or, or they, it's it's out like this and stuff. And it's like, well, just extend it down, and don't worry about clamping. Well, it does change the clamping force as you lower them. Right, which is what you'd want to do. But see, people, the traditional headphone is you want it to clamp, and we're like, no, this isn't traditional. Diana doesn't need to clamp. To produce space. In fact, as you pull the, as you create a gap, it'll push more air. Oh yeah, one guy was saying that <laughs> on, the, on the forums. It's like, oh, I like it when I was taking them off. There was like a sweet spot. Yeah, that's like yeah, same kind of thing. Right. And again, you could do the same thing with Diana. If you rotate the headphone on your head to change where the thick part is and bring it down here or back here, you you increase the gap, and it the the drivers push more air because you got a looser coupling to your head, and it's it's a cool effect. And we did it on purpose. That's it's not designed. To, it's not designed to seal. These our drivers don't require a seal for bass. You can they'll produce it without it. So it seems like mainly just people in the beginning that don't really know. Yeah, and they didn't look at any, anybody or, else. Because yeah. people have chosen stuff that own twelve sixty six. They're like, yep, mm -hmm. yeah, right. You know? And it's like, wow, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, I own them. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, yeah. So eventually, everybody gets used to what works for them and everything. Agreed. Or if you buy it on the used market, and you weren't sure what to expect. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's uh, it's a different fit. Our headphones aren't aren't don't fit like your traditional headphones. We don't we don't want to. They don't need to clamp. They're designed to be very different. Yeah. So well, you can tell result. by looking at them, <laughs> and that's why they sound <laughs> how they sound. It's part of it. That's part mm -hmm. of it. You know they're 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 more speaker like than headphone like sometimes, so yeah, that's the goal. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching us on this one, and please subscribe to us. We're always looking for subscribers, and uh, thank you. Take care. <laughs>